In this video, I'm going to show how you can set up your inventory system to be full so that it can't pick up any more items. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? This is actually part 12 of my complete inventory series, and in order to complete this tutorial, you need to have first completed the previous tutorials in order. If this is the first video in the series that you're seeing, just click the card in the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoyed these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable. Not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. So for this part of the build, we're actually going to have to create some new flow macros as well as modify some existing ones. And as our items come into our inventory, we need to check and see if there's an open slot. If there's no open slot, then we need to check all the slots that are filled to see if it's the same item. And if it's the same item, we need to see if there's room. Okay, we're actually going to begin by building a new flow macro under our macros item slot folder. Call it full check, and this is what that macro needs to look like. Let me just briefly explain what it is that this is doing. We, as the flow is coming in, and this is going to be with every single item that comes in, we are setting the, um, the object variable on our inventory game item, or game object, to true. And then we are going to run a for loop, so we're setting it as true, and then we are going to do a check to see if it's not true by getting every single one of the, the, the children on the inventory game object, so all of the slots, and checking if the object variable is full is false. So if we find one empty slot, it's gonna come back and say, okay, the inventory's not full. And it's going to set the uh, variable on that to false. And then it is gonna break loop. And we're going to come out of the loop, out of, into the output, and I'll show you exactly where we need to set this. Under the item slot, we are gonna set this right here at the top, right behind the from object to ground, or object from ground. Um, the, the output comes right into the full check here, and that is what we need to do. But we are also going to have to set this exact same super unit in one other place. Not only do we want it to do an inventory check as items come in, we also want it to do a full check if an item is picked up. And the way that we do that is going into our item game object. We're going to go under the relocate item super unit, and we are actually going to put that exact same flow macro right here. Behind the slot to OM, just run the flow into the full check, and from the output, go into the OM update. Okay, let's move on to the next macro that we're going to need. Under the macros folder, under the world item folder, we are going to have to create a new flow macro called cap check item. And uh, this is the overview, so this is the zoomed out version, so you can get an idea on where these things are setting. I'm just going to start right here at the beginning. Um, as the input comes into this flow macro, and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do with this. Let me just explain how this one's working. We are setting a new uh, scene variable called add to slot as null, and this will make more sense in just a few minutes. It might not seem right at the moment uh, like you understand why in the world I'm doing this. It will make more sense, I promise. So we're going to set the add to slot scene variable to null. We are actually creating this during game time. Then we are going to check each slot, and we're going to get the children of all the inventory, uh, all of the item slots essentially from the inventory, all the children from that. And then we're going to check to see uh, are they the same item. The item that we're trying to add, because this is going to be on the world item that we're picking up, is this the same item as the slot? And um, so the inventory is already full before you get to this point, so it's just checking to see if it's the same item. And if it is the same item, then it's going to come in here and it's going to do a capped check. Okay, it's the same item. Is that item capped out? If it's not capped out, then what we're going to do is we're going to set that slot, the one that we're checking from the for loop, so that child of the inventory game object, we're setting that slot as uh, the add to slot variable here. And then we are going to break the loop. Um, and, you know, I understand that there might have been a different way to do that. That's the way I chose to do it here. 
because we are actually going to use the same macro somewhere else. So let me just click on a game item and I will show you exactly where we're going to have to, um, the changes that we're going to have to make on it. So this is just any game object. This is the item flow macro. And uh, we are actually going to have to first add uh, this variable here. As we um, come, as an item comes in, is the split UI open? No. Is the, is the item over a game, uh, the game object, the inventory panel? No. Okay. Is there an item in your hand? No. Okay, then we can start picking things up. Well, we got one more check. Is the inventory full? If the inventory is not full, then we'll just start picking the item up and destroy that game object on pickup. Uh, the uh, image of the world item, all that's destroyed, not the item being added. So um, if the inventory is full, then what we need to do is we need to run that cap check where we checked all those things. We set the um, the, the variable, the, the scene variable add to slot to, to null, and then we came around and said, okay, wait a minute, there is something that we can add. And so we are setting that slot, that uh, child of that inventory game object to uh, add to slot. And as we do that, we're coming out of this check and saying, uh, well, is there an add to slot? If there's not an add to slot, meaning uh, essentially that there are no uh, game objects like that in the inventory or there is no room in those game objects, then it's going to come out and do a null check. Basically, have you set something to the add to slot? If it is null, it means that no, we haven't, there's no room. So what we're gonna do is we're going to trigger a full uh, custom event on the inventory game object. And I'll show you how to set that up in just a minute. But if we have set an item, uh, if there's room for that. Now keep in mind that this is only one item, so we don't have to do any kind of finesse here. We're just gonna add that game item to the inventory. Okay, so we have the um, cap check item. What I need you to do now is I need you to grab all of this and right click and copy this selection because we're about to have to make a new flow macro that looks almost identical. Okay, under the, the macros folder, under the stack manager folder, create a new flow macro called CapCheck Stack. And all you're gonna do for this one is you're going to right click and you're gonna hit paste and you should see something very similar that comes out. We are just gonna make one little change right in here. Now, in the original uh, cap, cap check item, you just have these two units that are missing. Uh, so essentially what it's doing is it's like this item that I'm trying to pick up. Well, this is a stacked item, so we need to actually check the first item in the list list. So we check the list object variable on these stacked items, and I can't show you one because remember we picked that up and it instantiates an object, but this is actually the flow macro that we're gonna need you to make. Just make those two changes, and then we're going to have, have to make one more flow macro uh, called the, the stack cap the stack cap split okay and that one actually looks like this one this one is a great deal bigger um, so essentially why we need this is uh, because with the cap check stack we are checking to see if there's an item uh, that is if there's room for that item and let's say there is well we still need to check the number of items that we need to fit in there and that's what this flow macro is actually going to be responsible for so you can go ahead and pause your screen and build that now. Um, I'm gonna talk about each section um, as we go. So as the flow comes in from the input, we are checking to see if there's only one item. If there's only one item and there's room, well then we'll just add it and we'll delete the game object that we are actually clicking on. But what if there's more than one item? If there's more than one item, it should come back as a false return, and then we're gonna do a for loop, and then we're gonna get the difference in that slot. How many items can we fit in that slot? Well, you can actually fit, um, let's say the cap is four and you have uh, two items in there, but you have three in your hand. Well, you're gonna pick up two of those game objects by getting the scene variable add to slot. Remember, this is the slot that had room. That's why we set that as a scene variable. So we're checking from that slot, we're gonna get the child of that slot, which is the item, and we're checking the slot list on that. We are getting the first item in the slot list, checking the item cap, and then counting the items in that slot list. And then we are subtracting from the item cap the slot list item. So how many How many can we fit? Okay, how many do we have? Then we're gonna run that into a for loop with that uh, number, the difference between those two actually being the last 
uh, node there. So we're going to start with the first item in the list in, in our uh, uh, the item cap or the slot list here. We are going to um, start adding those items one by one until we fill up that item. The way we do that is we run a body into our inventory check. So we're just adding those objects from the list in that stack. We are checking uh, the inventory game object here is where this, this inventory check is going to be happening. And we're just going to add those items. And as we add them, we are going to remove those items. Then uh, as we exit here, the for loop, we're going to go up here and check and see is there anything left in our list. Because if there's not anything left in our list, then what we need to do is destroy that game object. If there are still items in that list, doesn't matter how many there are, if there's more than zero, then we need to do an update amount custom event. And let me show you where we're actually going to put these um, full macros that we're going to, uh, that we just made. And I'll also show you uh, where to do that custom event. Let's start with a custom event here. On our new stack flow macro, just create a new custom event called update event and run it into, or sorry, update amount custom event, run it into the update amount super unit, just like so. Now under our add stack, so this is where we pick our uh, those items up, we need to yet again put another inventory full check here so that when uh, we don't have an object in our hand, and the inventory isn't full, it'll just add that item, it'll just add the stack. But if our inventory is full, well then we need to run the cap check stack right up here that we just created that is going to see, is there the same item? Yes. Is there room? Yes. Okay. Well then we're setting that add to slot scene variable here. It is not null, so we have something to add and we're going into that stack cap split where we're going to start splitting out how many items we can grab. Now this is the best way I could figure this out and I'll show you what this does. And you may not like this system, but this is the way I actually built this. Um, if it is null, it means that there is nothing to, uh, there's no room for it at all and we're just going to get that full custom uh, event trigger uh, actually fired right there. I'll actually show you what this does uh, and what I mean by that stack cap split. Um, in just a second. Let's go to our inventory game object here because this is where we're going to send the message that the inventory is full. And I think this is actually, it might not keep me kick sensitive, but I'm OCD like that. I like it to look exactly the way it did. So when we trigger the custom event here full, you can do whatever you want here. I'm just sending a debug log uh, to myself saying the inventory is full so that I know that it's working. You could throw up a picture and have it fade away over time. You could make your character speak, you can make a bump sound, whatever you want to do. This is where you'd actually fire that, um, that animation or whatever you want to do. I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to do a debug log here saying, hey, the inventory is full. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, now that we've got all these implemented, I'm just going to uh, throw these in. Actually, I think I forgot something, didn't I? I forgot to show you where to put those macros. No, I didn't. No, I, sh I showed you where it was. Man, guys, it has been a long video series. I think I'm tired. So let's just go ahead and do this, and uh, we should be good to go. So I've got all these keys stacked on top of each other. That I use keys because keys fill the slots. And what we should see here is that we can pick up items and when we picked up enough, now I know the cap on this is actually four. Watch what happens in my log. You get this message down here saying inventory full. So I can't pick up any more items, but I can take this item and I can throw it out. And so now I have uh, this berry and I have four stacked items. So I can pick up the four. Now, let me show you the one thing that you might not like, but this is the best way I found to uh, work this system. I'm sorry, I forgot something. Let me go right here. Okay, one, two here, one, two here. I have four items. Um, you actually have to click that twice. And you might not like that, but I would think that if you're running over objects, like you pick up as many as you can get, I don't know. You, you can figure out if you like that or not. That's just the system that I used here. But now you should have an inventory that actually fills up and when there are no more slots left, you actually get that message. So that's how you set up your inventory being full. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have made it this far, then you should now have my complete inventory system. So give yourself a big pat on the back and go make a great game with it. 
I sincerely hope this series was helpful for you, and at the very least, you now know that you can pretty much make anything you want using Bolt Visual Scripting with Unity. I am really looking forward to my next project, but for now, just let me say thank you so much for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.